physiotherapy. Okay, so we're going live. We're starting in three, two, one, and go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Karthik. I'm head of therapy at Sikino Healthcare Solutions. Today, we are at, at another live event of uh, Sikino Healthcare Capsules. Cancer is an alarming word, isn't it? Cancer is considered as a second leading cause of death globally as per WHO. This cancer, if you see, it causes a burden which is globally, okay, it causes about a tremendous uh, strain physically uh, to the emotionally and financially to the individual, to the families, to the communities and even the healthcare systems also. Is cancer the health? Better quality of a life? Is it possible? That is what we are going to see today. Today, we have a very renowned person in our midst, Dr. Sundar Kumar V. Dr. Sundar Kumar V is PhD in physiotherapy. Sir has got 23 years of experience in physiotherapy both in academics and in clinicals. He has done 28 publications and one book chapter. And for the past five years, his major focus team is in oncology and developing oncology-based rehab institutions. We are happy to have you in Amitsa. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Karthik. I think uh, this is the second time I'm coming to Sukino. I'm very happy that Sukino is focusing on oncology rehab as a specialty focus area and I think for the burden of cancer we have in our country uh, this is the right step. Uh, oncology rehab is still at a reasonably nascent stage compared to the improvements we've had in medical field for cancer. So I'm, I'm happy Sukino is taking this as a major event. This is the second time I'm visiting your facility to uh, work with your team on oncology rehab. Thank you for this advice. Nice, sir. Viewers, today we are going to see how this cancer can be managed. Sir, we have heard about neuro rehab, ortho rehab, and even cardiac rehab also. What is this onco rehab? Okay. Uh, I think uh, rehabilitation is a very broad terminology. Uh, WHO puts it across as trying our best with what is the available resources to get a person to the maximum possible functional extent within the context of his living. Okay? And as you started saying that cancer can have devastating impact on an individual, uh, they undergo major changes in their physical, emotional and of course financial implications comes on board. And you use the right term about quality of life. So cancer and its therapies result in a significant series of events that has a cascading effect on overall functioning of an individual and thereby affecting his quality of life. Rehab is a very broad framework, includes multiple components of interventions from physiotherapy to speech therapy, psychologist, occupational therapist, nursing care, dentistry, multiple focus comes on board to address various facets of functional limitations in people with cancer. So by rehab, the final goal of oncology rehab, as you said, is to add meaningful life to an individual's, yes, that's what we focus on. Wonderful, sir. So, sir, when you were talking, uh, you were telling about the word called as a rehab and therapy. Can you just tell to our viewers, like, how did this therapy evolved for this cancer rehab? Okay, uh, I can go back to our experiences when we were training. I graduated from CMC Valor and CMC Valor is a reasonably renowned cancer facility. Uh, when we were undergoing training, the kind of patients whom we got to treat for cancer was that somebody, say for example, somebody had a bone tumor and then he underwent an amputation. So we would see in our department for rehabilitation following amputation. You know? Or somebody probably is undergoing a surgery and then has a major lung complication following surgery. At that point in time, the physio team would have been given a reference to look at immediate post-op care. See. So during our training, uh, it's not only unique to what I went through, but when you look at our peers around our environment, uh, the focus was on a particular problem. For example, if you look at somebody who has undergone breast cancer, the known 
challenges in those individuals is that following breast cancer, they're likely to have limitations in moving their arms. They're likely to experience swelling in their arms. So they would approach rehab facilities or rehab specialists to improve range of motion of the shoulder or to improve lymphedema. So following cancer, they had a very specific focused entity for which rehab services were offered. Somebody with head and neck cancer is likely to have weakness in his shoulders, likely to experience movement restrictions, likely to experience difficulty in eating because of mouth opening. So those are the kind of people who had very focused region specific problems for which rehab specialist was approached upon. There are very few cancer specialty centers. Uh, Tata Memorial is something we all uh, heard about. In Chennai, Adair Cancer Hospital is very renowned. Uh, in Tata Memorial, I've seen rehab services having a very prominent role. It's sort of integrated. So they're probably maybe a little more advanced than what the common day-to-day -day centers are. But that's all it was probably about 20, 25 years back. Now, when we look at the role of, uh, I wouldn't use the word rehab interventions over here. We probably would bring in a little more uh, broader term called as supportive care interventions, of which exercise is a component. Uh, now, it has moved on from a region specific or a focused entity to more a generic entity wherein the supportive care interventions are required to be integrated within cancer care right at the time of diagnosis. Okay. Initially, maybe if somebody has been diagnosed with cancer, he underwent surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy as dictated by the disease and the evidence at that time for the treatment. At the end of it all, you know that person has survived and then there is a problem what is facing. At that point in time, maybe rehab was essential for them. Now the belief has changed. It is recommended that supportive interventions begin at the time of cancer diagnosis. Wonderful. So that's a sea of change in the approach what we have for cancer care. Yeah. Wonderful sir, wonderful sir. Sir, uh, when you're talking about this diagnosis, something is striking me. Once a patient has been, the day one it's been diagnosed, it's a big turmoil for the entire, not only for the patient, for the family also. How is that the rehab can help? Because I have heard like at different stages, like you were told about the diagnosis. It can be from a chemotherapy, radiotherapy, it can be a surgical intervention. How do we, how can we, do, can you tell to our viewers like, uh, what is the role of physiotherapy? Maybe starting from the time of diagnosis to how do we take it forward at different levels? It can be even for the palliative also. Okay. Uh, I'll first address the impact what the, the diagnosis of cancer can have and what role we can play uh, as supportive care opportunities that we have. Uh, when we started oncology rehab services within um, Ramaya Medical College Hospital, we started it in November 2016. Uh, I, I very vividly remember a very good example. We had an elderly gentleman who came to us for undergoing radiotherapy. He was admitted in a hospital. He probably had about 20 odd radiotherapy sessions scheduled. So when we first evaluated him, uh, his family support was very good. But at times that becomes a problem, you know. The diagnosis of cancer makes everybody into a shell. We tend to assume that that's the end of life and we probably do not have a future ahead. So the family tends to become very, very protective about what is happening to that individual. That individual loses hope. So he goes into a shell. So they are mostly confined to doing very basic activities. So this gentleman, when we saw him, he was actually bedridden not even wash, walking to the washroom. He clearly had the capability to walk to the washroom. So the diagnosis of cancer caused a kind of an impact on him that he sort of gave up. He believed he can't do much. And he also was not sure how much he can do. The thing is, if he starts walking around, moving around for a mm. daily shows, he wasn't sure whether it will actually negatively impact. Uh, quite common, right? So he went into a shell and then he sort of withdrew himself to the bed. That's one of the first patients whom we actually worked on when we started off our services. So what we did is we did our basic assessments. We looked at his uh, physical fitness levels by standardized outcome measures as recommended in current literature. He ran a six minute walk distance in the range of about 200 odd, 240 odd meters. So we devised a simple strategy. 
the primary patients whom we target in our facility at that time was patients from low socioeconomic strata in the general ward, about 20 patients in a, it's a huge ward, sufficient space for everybody. Mm-hmm. But what that gave us an opportunity is that nobody is secluded in a separate confined room. It's a quite open space for people to interact with. So we thought if you bring in the group dynamics, we will be able to change people's perceptions. So we started working with group therapy as an option where Mm -hmm. we got people to exercise in groups within the environment where they are admitted in. So we didn't shift them to a different facility. They were admitted in a general ward. It's a quite spacious ward. We had sufficient spaces between beds. So we moved them around. We started them on group therapy. When this gentleman saw others exercising, he felt, okay, maybe that's something I could try. And then we counseled him towards participating in exercise sessions. So we got him to do that. Then there was a drastic change. Within a week's time, he was quite confident. He started going to washroom on his own. He was getting independent in his daily routine for the time what he was admitted with us. And functionally, his six minutes walk distance crossed 400 meters. So that was a big change for us. Yes. But beyond the therapeutic changes, what actually sort of made us realize is that a person who probably felt that he cannot do much, he's confining himself, transformed into a peer leader for a group therapy program. He became a source of motivation for other patients to come and join on exercise. So to answer your question on what role can we play as physios, as exercise specialist, uh, I look at our role in about three domains. One, as a therapist, you evaluate the person, look at his functional impairment, and then you give a focused exercise program that is targeted towards working on that functional impairment. It could be fatigue, it could be pain, it could be cardiorespiratory endurance, it could be muscle strength. So that is a therapeutic intervention what you're doing. In addition to that, by getting them to engage in these things, You're counseling them as part of the therapy services towards leading an independent life. So that became the next domain that you counsel your patients to start believing in themselves to make realistic goals towards achieving important outcomes in their life that eventually translates into better quality of life. The third component, I think we have an important role, of course, in coordination with the oncologist. Uh, oncologists are doing a wonderful job. I think the change that has happened mm. within the field of oncology is tremendous. The survival rates have overall improved. Medications are quite advanced. So they're doing a phenomenal job. But at the end of the day, we need people who can sit with a patient and interact for a little longer duration of time to listen to small, small concerns what they experience. Physiotherapists, by virtue of the nature of a profession, Our intervention takes time. We spend about 20 minutes, 30 minutes for the patient. And that provides us an opportunity to spend a reasonable amount of quality time with each Mm -hmm. patient. And that actually helps us to educate the patient about his disease. Correct. That's where multidisciplinary team really plays an important role. And I'm very lucky to work in a multidisciplinary team environment where we have excellent support from oncology. In fact, when we started oncology services, it was our oncologists when we approached them and said that uh, we were thinking of doing this mm. uh, work. Dr. Nalini Kerala, Kerala was the person who was uh, heading the department and then mm. she was so, so supportive to us. So that Please go ahead, this is all your patients, do whatever you can, Wonderful. help them out to move on. Uh, I'm reiterating that because when we say that as physios we want to do some work, it's important for us to realize the role of a multidisciplinary team. So we had excellent support from oncologists, we know what the patient's condition is. So we discuss with our oncologists, we come on board, and then we translate that information in a layman's term for the person to understand. So we have the oncologist feeding the information, nurses feeding the information, we spending time with them, we feeding the information. It leads to overall better awareness about the health condition. So I look at therapeutic services, counseling towards improving functioning, and of course patient education. So there's are three broad areas I look at our roles as. Wonderful, sir, wonderful, sir. When we talk about the term called as cancer, we cannot deny the term called as pain. Yeah. Yes. It may be a physical, emotional, okay, at multiple levels. So, but physiotherapy plays a very major role, especially in management of pain. 
it can be the modalities, it can be the other interventions. Can you say something more about this, uh, how this pain can be managed? Okay. Uh, pain probably is a controversial area within oncology per se. I'm using the word controversial area uh, simply because not that it's a major controversy, but I am looking at it in that context that uh, pain of course is a major, major problem in cancer pain. In fact, the palliative care model that has evolved in many countries is designed towards dealing with cancer pain, cancer pain with increasing access to higher order pain medications is a model that has actually led to development of palliative care in many countries including in India. Uh, if you look at the WHO pain ladder, it is actually designed in the context of medical management of pain. Cancer pain is a complex entity, it's quite different from the peripheral pain what we commonly come across in our things. But if you look at the physiotherapy interventions, we work on specific focus areas of pain with various opportunities that we have, including using exercise and electrotherapy modalities such as strength and other uh, factors that facilitate movement. Unfortunately, within the current framework of pain management in cancer, even in WHO's pain ladder, other supportive interventions have not have their place at the moment. So that's the reason I said it's a controversial area for okay. me personally, because it is not part of a recommended strategy at this point in time. I could also say that not much research has probably happened. There is research that has happened, but they probably are not of high quality research. So there's a lot of gap in that. We in fact recently uh, submitted a nice perspective on role of non-invasive electroanalgesia mm. in management of cancer pain that was accepted for publication in Indian Journal of Cancer, where we precisely argued this point, the role non-invasive non electroanalgesia can play in management of cancer pain. There's an emerging evidence that's supporting in that regard. We have used TENS within our facility in not as a very common measure, but in very selective cases in consultation with our oncologist. Literature suggests that it has some evidence that it could be beneficial. But the biggest advantage what I see of our role in cancer pain is twofold. One, exercise and movement has a lot of other impact on pain and its perception. It may be beneficial in the perception of pain. And it can also probably play an active role in modulating pain. Electroanalgesia in the form of TENS. Uh, we've looked at an extensive literature review. Uh, as one philosophy in ethics, what we say is that do no harm. So literature extensively said that it does not do any harm. Mm. It's well tolerated. And it probably gives scope for people to gain control over their pain management. TENS is a simple device that can be prescribed to patients to use it on their own. That's the way the model actually developed. So if a person uses for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes on a given site, trained to use it, he was feeling a lot of pain, he has the freedom to take control of his pain management and it does not have any negative effects. Of course, the evidence is emerging, it's not very strong, it's not very explicit to say that it works in all the situations. But in some kinds of a cancer pain, like for example, bone metastatic pain, it is shown to be having some beneficial effects. So. I would say that this is a huge area for development, which is non-invasive, does not have much of a known side effects. It can be beneficial, but we need a lot more research. And physiotherapists have a lot of scope to work towards developing strategies for cancer pain management, either with exercise or with electrode modalities. Per se. Wonderful, sir. Sir, always the word palliative, to an extent, it is considered, colloquially, it is considered as the end of life care. Can physiotherapy play a part in palliative care? Uh, I, I, again, the concepts are changing with regard to palliative care and end-of-life care. I think they both are two different entities in current understanding. In 2012, uh, our Indian government, we had a palliative care task force. They actually recommended a beautiful model and in 2017 and 18, they've actually developed training manuals for doctors and community health workers on palliative care. What this model actually gives a nice, uh, for a, like, it's like a rectangle kind of a thing. You have a diagonal going in over here. So diagnosis, the upper half of the, if you put a diagonal in a rectangle, the upper half is the curative services. The lower half is the palliative care services. It says that 
From diagnosis, the curative services are there, that's the focus. But palliative care is not starting at the end of all medical options, it's actually starting at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right? So the philosophy of palliative care currently is that you don't do it after you've exhausted all medical resources. You start at the time of diagnosis by educating the patient, his family about the disease, coping strategies. So the medical care takes care, medical interventions takes care of cure or supportive interventions in terms of reducing the symptoms or prolonging life. The support services helps the individual to cope up with the diagnosis in a better manner so that he can lead a better quality in life. Physios, as I said about the role what we play, I, I said about three components. So, so the same model gets integrated and then we can start having a role right from the beginning. In fact, one of the uh, models that we have developed in Ramaya Medical College is that as our role, we say our role comes in at the time of diagnosis where we would like to focus on educating patients about current health status as a consequence of cancer and in combination with general comorbidities that experience and focus on improving the physical fitness at the time of diagnosis. Uh, if you look at current clinical practice recommendations from many uh, clinical oncology societies such as Clinical Oncology Society of Australia, even from ACS, if you look at American mm. College of Sports Medicine, they've actually recommended integrating and embedding exercise as form of an intervention that needs to be offered right at the time of diagnosis. The reason for doing this is cancer and its therapies are known to have significant side effects such as fatigue, weakness, reduced endurance, nausea, loss of appetite, multiple symptoms including osteoporosis, multiple symptoms are there. Exercise by virtue of its various effects on multiple systems has been shown to be beneficial right at the time of diagnosis. There's a beautiful graph that I actually often quote. In fact, one of our very good friends, Dr. Stephen, he put that out as part of his PhD work. When you look at two groups of individuals who are starting with the same disease state mm. at a similar functional level. If you get one group to exercise, other group not to exercise. When they start chemo radiotherapy, the group that did not exercise, their overall capacity drops down like that. And then once the chemo radiotherapy is over, they slightly peak up. The group that exercised, they drop, but then it drop down like that. They go slow like this, and then they pick up better than what they were there. This happens because <coughs> I'm sorry. exercise is known to improve general conditioning of an individual, thereby allowing that individual to tolerate his primary cancer therapies better. So the current catchphrase in oncology within the rehab sphere is prehabilitation, where we focus on working with an individual right at the time of diagnosis. Yes. If there is an opportunity to work with their overall physical fitness prior to primary chemotherapies, if there is an opportunity available, even if for a couple of days we would like to use that, if there is an opportunity not existing because of the nature of the disease, we would like to integrate exercise interventions during chemo therapy. That's been a standard across many renowned centers and that's what we are doing in Ramaya as well. So within our facility, we are part, a very integral part of the oncology service teams wherein mm. uh, when the person is getting admitted to the ward, we consult with the oncologist, we discuss the patient with them, we evaluate with them. We normally include them into an exercise program, either individually or group, whether they're coming for radiotherapy or chemotherapy. In case Based on our screening checklist, if we think there are some contraindications, our oncologists are always approachable. We reach out to them and say, this is the concern we have. Do we need to intervene or should we hold back? They give us clear directions. To, okay, okay, this person, this is critical at this point in time. I think we can wait for a couple of days. For example, a person got a severe neutropenia, but a neutrophil count less than 200. So just hold on for a while. We'll wait till he recovers a little bit. Then we'll start our interventions. Again, the key word is that integrated services there. We mm. provide a multidisciplinary service. But we integrate that very well within the cancer care pathway. So the terminology what we use is like embedding exercise within the cancer care pathway is what we look at working on. So that's the model what we have developed. We were offering this to patients who are undergoing surgeries. Mm -hmm. We have a very good uh, team with our surgical oncology 
where the person is admitted for about three days, four days prior to surgery, depending on the health status. So we recruit them for a rehab program where we do a six minute walk test. We know their functional capacity. And then we put them on a physical fitness program, improve their lung functions, improve their muscle strength and prime their cardiorespiratory endurance. So the post-operative outcomes are better in terms of improving their mobilization. Wonderful, sir. wonderful. So we support the entire medical team in offering better functional outcomes to the patients. Yes. So after hearing so much from you, sir, uh, I infer like uh, cancer rehab is an ocean. Um, viewers, after hearing so much from sir, uh, definitely I am sure that you will be making use of these kind of facilities that is available. Uh, sir, would you like to say a take home message for our viewers? Uh, my take home message, I am going to reiterate what I said. The field of oncology has changed drastically over the last couple of decades. Uh, supportive care is crucial to improve the quality of life. Exercise interventions plays an important role. Wherever you work, try and integrate exercise interventions as part of cancer care pathways. You would be able to add meaningful years to a patient's lives. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. It was wonderful having you in our uh, Viewers, thank you so much for spending your precious time with us. And uh, thanks a lot for, sir, once again, thanks a lot. And we thank for management. And uh, viewers, you can wait for next month for yet another, uh, I mean, a live event of Healthcare Capsules. Until then, stay tuned. Uh, like us, subscribe us, our pages, uh, follow us. Thanks a lot. See you then. Bye-bye. Good evening. One second. Thank you, sir.